students. Welcome to our module number 12. In this video, you will learn how to enumerate the steps for multiplication and division of decimal numbers, multiply and divide decimal numbers, and solve real-life problems involving multiplication and division of decimal numbers. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer in your notebook. Number 1. Blank is the repeated addition. A. Division B. Multiplication C. Subtraction D. Total The correct answer is D. Multiplication 2. What is the product of 3 and 14 hundredths and 2 and 5 tenths? A. 7 and 5 tenths B. 7 and 65 hundredths C. 7 and 75 hundredths or D. 7 and 85 hundredths The answer is D. 7 and 85 hundredths 3. The cost of a dozen of lemon is 306 pesos. How much does a piece of lemon cost? A. 25 pesos B. 25 pesos and 25 centavos C. 25 pesos and 50 centavos or D. 25 pesos and 75 centavos The correct answer is C. 25 pesos and 50 centavos. Number 4. The cost of a slice of a mango bravo cake is 169 pesos and 95 centavos. If Mary will buy two slices, how much will she pay? A. 328 pesos and 90 centavos. B. 329 pesos and 90 centavos. C. 338 pesos and 90 centavos. D. 339 pesos and 90 centavos. The correct answer is D. 339 pesos and 90 centavos. Last question. If 78 and 75 hundredths is divided by 3, then the quotient is blank. A. 23 and 25 hundredths B. 24 and 25 hundredths C. 25 and 25 hundredths D. 26 and 25 hundredths The correct answer is D. 26 and 25 hundredths Let's have a recap. Write the correct answer on the line provided to make the statement true. The sum of 0 and 12 thousandths plus 2 and 134 thousandths plus 1 and 2 tenths is blank. 2. The difference of 25 and 795 thousandths and 2 and 675 thousandths is blank. 3. If 16 and 254 thousandths plus n is equal to 18 and 79 hundredths, then n is equal to blank. Simplify. 18 and 997 thousandths minus the quantity of 1 and 246 thousandths plus 5 and 789 thousandths is equal to n. The value of n is blank. Number 5. If the sum of 18 and 75 hundredths and 5 and 752 thousandths will be subtracted from the sum of 19 and 886 thousandths and 10 and 758 thousandths, the difference will be blank. Ronnie works at Pasig City Hall. During enhanced community quarantine, 
skeletal working scheme was implemented. Using his motorcycle, he goes to work every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. He drives 16.4 kilometers from his house to Pasig City Hall, back and forth. How many kilometers does he drive every week? If he has a consumption of 204 pesos and 18 centavos worth of gasoline per week, how much is his gasoline consumption per kilometer? First, we have to solve for the number of kilometers Ronnie has to drive in 3 days. So we have the number sentence 16 and 4 tenths times 3 is equal to n. Step 1. Line up the decimals in vertical order. It is not necessary that the decimal points are aligned. Multiply each digit of the factors starting from the rightmost digit just like whole numbers. So 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So bring down 2, carry 1 to the next place value to the left. 6 times 3 is equal to 18 plus 1. That is 19. Bring down 9 and carry 1 to the next place value. 1 times 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. Count the number of decimal places in both factors. Put the decimal point in the product. Since the number of decimal place is 1, count 1 from rightmost digit to the left and place the decimal point. So therefore, Ronnie drove 49 and 2 tenths in kilometers for 3 days. Since we already have the total number of kilometers Ronnie drove, we can now solve for the price of gasoline per kilometer using the number sentence 204 and 18 hundredths divided by 49 and 2 tenths is equal to n using the following steps. Number 1. Write the decimals in long division symbol. So 204 and 18 hundredths divided by 49 and 2 tenths. Step 2. Make the divisor a whole number by moving the decimal point to the right. Move the decimal point of the dividend the same number of places as the divisor. Place a decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point. Divide as you divide whole numbers. Add zeros if needed to complete the division. So 2041 divided by 492 is... 4.5 4 times 492 is 1968 Proceed to subtraction 2041 minus 1968 is equal to 73 Next, put down the 8. So 738 divided by 492 is 1.5. 1 times 492 is 492. And you have 738 minus 492 is 246. You can place zeros after each number. Bring down 0, 2460 divided by 492 will give you 5. So 5 times 492 is equal to 2460. 2460 Minus 2,460 is equal to 0. Therefore, 
The cost of gasoline per kilometer is 4 pesos and 15 centavos. Let's have some examples. 1 and 75 hundredths times 2. So 5 times 2, that's 10. Bring down 0, carry 1 to the next place value. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1, that's 15. Bring down 5, carry 1 to the next place value. Then 1 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Count the number of decimal places, 2. So therefore, the answer is 3 and 50 hundreds. Next, do this on your own. 12 and 25 hundreds times 0 and 15 hundreds. So just like what we did a while ago, Add the resulting products, 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Then bring down 1. Therefore, the answer is 1.8375. Let's have the division. 4 and 50 hundreds divided by 3. So using the long division, five divided by three is equal to one and fifty hundred. Do this on your own. Therefore, 12 and 388 thousands divided by 6 and 52 hundredths is equal to 1 and 9 tenths. Let's have a wrap up. Always remember that these are the steps in multiplying decimal numbers. First, line up the decimals in vertical order. It is not necessary that the decimal points are aligned. Number 2. Multiply each digit of the factors starting from the rightmost digit, just like whole numbers. And number 3. Count the number of decimal places in both factors, then put the decimal point in the product. And these are the steps in dividing decimal numbers. Write the decimals in long division symbol. Make the divisor a whole number by moving the decimal point to the right, and move the decimal point of the dividend the same number of the places as the divisor. Place a decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. Divide as you divide whole numbers. Add zeros if needed to complete the division. For our valuing, multiplying and dividing decimal numbers follow certain rules especially in counting and moving of decimal point while doing the process. Rules are important not only in this subject, but also in real life. In an Oslo paper, write a slogan 
or a saying about the rule that you follow as a student. For your differentiated activities, kindly refer to the given module. Let's have a post-test. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer on the space provided before each number. I hope you learned something today. Goodbye and God bless us all. Learners, welcome to Mathematics 4. Today, we are going to study on how to represent and perform multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction or MDAS correctly. Are you now ready? Let's do it! For our pretest, evaluate the following expressions. Write the letter of the correct answer on the space provided before each number. Number 1. 7 times 8 plus 130 minus 12. The answer is letter C. Number 2. 15 divided by 3 times 20 plus 5 is equal to 105. Letter A. Number 3. 3 plus 83 minus 7 times 11. The answer is? B. Number 4. 76 minus 8 times 9. The answer is letter D. Number 5. 9 times 6 divided by 3 minus 15. The answer is letter C. Recap. Read and solve the problem below. There are 11 bicycles and tricycles parked in a grocery parking lot. Marie counted 29 wheels in all. How many bicycles are there? The answer is... 4 bicycles. Lesson... Study the number sentences below. We have 4 times 15 plus 8 minus 9 plus 25 is equal to N. And 15 divided by 3 plus 8 times 4 minus 15 equals n. Have you encountered problems like these? How will you solve the problems? Are you familiar with the acronym MDAS? What does it stand for? MDAS stands for multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And how do we solve equation with varied operations? Let us learn these rules. Rule number one. Do multiplication and division from left to right. 
than. Rule number two. Do addition and subtraction from left to right. Like this. In evaluating an expression with more than two operations without exponent and parenthesis or grouping symbols, we should follow the correct order of operations so that there is no confusion. Remember that in multiplication and division, solve whichever comes first. So as in addition and subtraction. Example number two. Look at this. Activities. Activity one. You can pause this video to answer this activity. Direction. Match each expression to its corresponding answer by connecting the hearts. Activity 2 Direction Evaluate the following expressions. Use the number that represents the letter. And please write your solution below. Activity 3. Direction. Evaluate the following expressions. Wrap up! What are the rules in evaluating expressions that involve more than two operations? What is the rule one? How about the rule number two? Valuing. Why is it important to follow rules and regulations? One more time. Why is it important to follow rules and regulations? Post test. Direction. Evaluate the following expressions. Write the letter of the correct answer on the space provided before each number. Key to correction. And that's all for today. I hope that you've learned something and let's meet Ayang Buhay Grade 6. Welcome to lesson number 8. If you are ready, clap once. If you are excited, clap twice. And if you are ready to rock, clap thrice. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to divide a mixed fraction by a mixed fraction. For today's lesson, I'm sure that you still remember Carla, my friend that we rewarded a face mask last time. Today, we will give additional protective equipment to her by answering 5 item tests. For every correct answer, she will be rewarded a PPE or personal protective equipment. So let's help Carla to answer the 5 item tests. Let's start now to question number 1. 
divide 3 and 3 fourths by 1 and 2 thirds. Here are the options. A, 2 and 1 fourth. B, 2 and 2 thirds. C, 2 and 3 fourths. And D, 2 and 1 third. Go! The correct answer is letter A. Now, number 2. What is the quotient of 2 and 2 fifths and 4 and 1 fifth? Here are the options. Letter A, 3 sevenths, B, 4 sevenths, C, 5 sevenths, and D, 6 sevenths. Go! The correct answer is letter B, 4 sevenths. Number three. What is the quotient when you divide four and one six by three and three fourths? Here are the options: A, one and one nine; B, one and two nines; C, one and three nines; and D, one and four nines. Go. The correct answer is letter A. Very good. Three knocks down and two more to go. Now, let's go to item number four. Hazel has five and two fifths meters of ribbon. How many one and two sevenths of meters can be cut from it? Here are the options. A. Six and one fifth. B, 5 and 1 fifth, C, 4 and 1 fifth, and D, 3 and 1 fifth. Go! The correct answer is letter C, 4 and 1 fifth. Now, item number 5. Juliet baked 4 and 3 six mango cakes for her birthday. If its serving size was 2 and 1 fourth, how many servings did she have? Here are the options. A. 5 B. 4 C. 3 and D. 2 Go! Right! The correct answer is letter D. 2 servings. Carla Collected all the PPEs that she need for her protection. Thank you, grade 6, for helping Carla. Now, grade 6, let's check if you are still remember on how to divide fraction. How do we divide fraction? Okay, grade 6, let's meet Elsa, a dressmaker. We will help her to solve a problem. Elsa wants to make homemade personal protective equipment to be donated to the frontliners. She has 13 and 1 half meters long of specialized fabric. How many PPEs can she make if each PPE uses 1 and 1 half meters of specialized fabric? Okay, to solve the problem, we will divide 13 and 1 half by 1 half by following a certain steps. We will now proceed to the steps on how to do it. If you are ready, clap once. If you are excited, clap twice. And if you're ready to rock, clap thrice. Okay, step number one. Convert mixed number into improper fraction. 13 in one half. You simply multiply 2 times 13, that is 26, plus 1 is equals to 27. Then copy the denominator 2. So it is 27 over 2. Then symmetry with 1 in 1 half. Change to improper fraction. 2 times 1 equals 2. Plus 1 equals 3. Then copy the denominator 2. So our new divisor is 3 over 2. Step number 2. Multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. We will bring down 27 over 2. Change the operation sign division to multiplication. Then 
reciprocal of the divisor that is 2 over 3. So, we will now multiply the numerators 27 times 2, that is 54. Then, the denominators 2 times 3, that is 6. Our answer now is 54 over 6. But, we need to express our answer in lowest term if possible. So, 54 divided by 6, the quotient is 9. So, our final answer is Elsa can make 9 PPEs. We can solve also that kind of problem using cancellation method. Divide 13 and 1 half by 1 and 1 half by following a certain steps. Step number 1. Convert mixed number into improper fraction. 13 and 1 half divided by 1 and 1 half. We simply change 13 and 1 half to improper fraction by multiplying the denominator 2 to the whole number 13. 2 times 13 is 26 plus 1 becomes 27 over 2. So, our new fraction is 27 over 2. Also, with 1 in 1 half, we change this into improper fraction by multiplying the denominator 2 to the whole number 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 equals 3. So, our new fraction is 3 over 2. Next, step number 2. Multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Bring down 27 over 2. Change the operation sign from division to multiplication sign. Then, change the divisor to its reciprocal. 3 over 2 becomes 2 over 3. Next, step number 3. Use cancellation to simplify the factors by dividing the numerator and denominator by the GCF. 27 times 2 thirds. The GCF of 27 and 3 is 3. So, 27 divided by 3 is 9. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. Also with... The GCF of 2 and 2 is 2. So, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Then next, step number 4. Multiply the new numerators and denominators. Express the answer in simplest form if needed. 9 over 1 times 1 over 1 equals... 9 over 1 or 9 so Elsa can make 9 PPEs ok grade 6 what kind of a person is Elsa if you were Elsa will you do the same why I hope you learn from our discussion. Let's do now some activities. For practice, directions, match column A with column B, write the letter of your answer. You're doing good in your activity. Next, keep on practicing. Directions. Divide the following. Choose the letter of the correct answer.
you're doing better. Let's test yourself. Directions. Read and solve the problem. One and two. Okay, very good. Grade 6, you're doing great in your activities. To recall what we have discussed today, may I ask you this. How do we divide mixed fraction by another mixed fraction? To measure how much you learned today, let's have a 5-item pause test. Directions. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Grade 6, here are the key to correction. Retest, practice, keep practicing, teach yourself, and post test. Thank you, Grade 6, for watching. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome to module number 11. In this video, you will learn how to enumerate the steps for addition and subtraction of decimal numbers, add and subtract decimal numbers, and solve real-life problems involving addition and subtraction of decimal numbers. Let's start with a pretest. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer in your notebook. Number 1. The total area of a lot is 139 and 75 in square meters. Mr. Sabasa will construct a house in the lot that will occupy 92 and 2500 square meters and the remaining lot is for the garden. How many square meters is allotted for the garden? A. 47 and 5 tenths B. 92 and 25 hundredths C. 139 and 75 hundredths and D. 232 A. 47 and 5 tenths Number 2 what is the sum of 5 and 6 and 78 thousandths and 9 and 14 hundredths? A. 13 and 68 thousandths B. 14 and 718 thousandths C. 14 and 818 thousandths or D. 15 and 28 thousandths The correct answer is C, 14 and 818 thousandths. Number 3. What is the difference of 2 and 16 thousandths and 0.14 thousandths? A, 0 and 2 thousandths. B, 1 and 2 thousandths. C, 2 and 2 thousandths. D, 2 and 12 thousandths. The 
correct answer is C. Louis needs to buy the following for his project. 25 pieces Oslo paper, which costs 27 and 75. One bottle Elmer's glue, which costs 20 pesos and 35 centavos. And 10 pieces paper clip, which costs 4 pesos and 25 centavos. How much does Louis need to spend in buying materials for his project? A. 52 and 25 centavos. B. 52 pesos and 35 centavos. C. 53 pesos and 75 centavos. Or D. 54 pesos and 25 centavos. B. 52 pesos and 35 centavos. Using the same example, if he has 100 pesos, how much will be the change? A. 46 pesos and 65 centavos. B. 47 pesos and 25 centavos. C. 47 pesos and 55 centavos. Or D. 47 pesos and 65 centavos. The correct answer is B. 47 pesos and 65 centavos. Let's have a recap. Fill in the blanks. Identify the words that will make the statement true. Number one, blank is a number that can be expressed as the quotient or fraction p over q of two integers, a numerator p, and a non-zero denominator q. Number two, this repeating decimal is an example of blank decimals. Three, the equivalent decimal of three over four is blank. Number 4. The fractional value of 0 0.8 is blank. And number 5. A blank is a decimal number that contains a finite number of digits after the decimal point. During the enhanced community quarantine, people were advised to eat fruits as a natural source of vitamin C to slow down the spread of coronavirus. One Saturday morning, Mrs. Santos went to the fruit section of the grocery. She picked fruits and paid this at the cashier. If ripe mangoes cost 120 pesos and 70 centavos, half kilo of lemon cost 75 pesos and 25 centavos, a pack of strawberries for 62 pesos and 75 centavos, and a pineapple for 65 pesos and 85 centavos. How much did she spend for the fruits? If she gave 500 pesos to the cashier, how much is her change? In this problem, the cost of the fruits are example of decimal numbers. So let's answer the first question. To solve this problem, we have the number sentence 120 pesos and 70 centavos plus 75 pesos and 25 centavos plus 65 pesos and 85 centavos plus 62 pesos and 75 centavos is equal to N, where N is the total amount of the fruits Mrs. Santos bought. To solve for the value of N, follow the steps in adding decimal numbers. Step 1. Write the decimals in vertical order. Align the decimals. Add extra zeros to the right of the number so that each number has the same number of digits to the right of the decimal place. Step 3. Add the decimal numbers starting from the rightmost digit to the left direction. So we start with 0 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is equal to 15. 
So you write down 5 and then place 1 on the top of 7. So continue, you have 1 plus 7 plus 2 plus 8 plus 7 is equal to 25. So you place 5 and then carry 2. So 2 plus 0 plus 5 plus 5 plus 2 is equal to 40. So you bring down 4, carry 1. 1 plus 2 plus 7 plus 6 plus 6 is equal to 22. Bring down 2, then carry 2. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So bring down 3. Place the decimal point of the answer in line with the other decimal points. How much did she spend for the fruits? Next, let's answer the second question. To solve how much is your change, the number sentence is 500 pesos minus 324 pesos and 55 centavos is equal to N. To solve, let us follow the steps in subtracting decimal numbers. Number 1. Write the decimals in vertical order. Align the decimals. Just like what we did in adding decimals, we add extra zeros to the right of the number so that each number has the same number of digits to the right of the decimal place. So we put two zeros here. Subtract the decimal numbers starting from the rightmost digit to the left direction. As you subtract, do borrowing if needed. So here, 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. So bring down 5. Since we borrow 1 from the second 0, instead of 10, we will write 9. Therefore, 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So bring down 4. 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. So bring down 5. 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. Bring down 7. And lastly, 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. So bring down 1. Place the decimal point of the answer in line with the other decimal points. So we place the decimal point. If she gave 500 pesos to the cashier, how much is her change? Mrs. Santos received the change of 175 pesos and 45 centavos. 8 and 25 plus 16 and 57 hundreds plus 22 and 89 hundreds is equal to black. Align first the decimal numbers 5 plus 7 plus 9 is 21, bring down 1, carry 2, so 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 8 is equal to 17, bring down 7. Carry 1. 1 plus 8 plus 6 plus 2 is 17. So bring down 7. Carry 1. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 4. So bring down 4. Place the decimal point. Therefore, 47 and 71 hundredths is the answer. Example number two. Do this on your own. Add a corresponding zero. Proceed with the addition.
and place the decimal point. The answer is 130 and 80 hundredths. Example number 3. 18 and 79 hundredths minus 2 and 55 hundredths. Line the decimals followed by subtraction. and place the decimal point. Therefore, the answer is 16 and 24 hundredths. How about 150 and 89 hundredths minus 79 and 15 hundredths? Therefore, the answer is 71 and 74 hundredths. Let's have a wrap up. Always remember that these are the steps in adding decimal numbers. Number 1. Write the decimals in vertical order. Align the decimals. Number 2. Add extra zeros to the right of the number so that each number has the same number of digits to the right of the decimal place. Add the decimal numbers starting from the rightmost digit to the left direction. And number 4, place the decimal point of the result in line with the other decimal point. And the steps in subtracting decimal numbers are the same. You have to write the decimals in vertical order and align the decimals. Add extra zeros to the right of the number so that each number has the same number of digits to the right of the decimal place. Subtract the decimal numbers starting from the rightmost digit to the left direction. And as you subtract, do barrowing if needed. Place the decimal point of the result in line with the other decimal points. For our value, systematic work can make addition and subtraction of decimal numbers simple and easier. During this pandemic time, where schooling will be done through distance learning, draw a diagram showing your systematic way of doing distance learning at home. Use Oslo paper to draw your diagram. For your differentiated activities, kindly refer to the given module. Let's have a post-test. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer in your notebook. I hope you learned something today. Keep safe and God bless us all. Good morning, grade 10. This is Teacher Visa welcoming you to our virtual classroom. Today, we are going to discuss the measures of central tendency of ungrouped data. During the COVID-19 pandemic, have you ever wondered the average of confirmed cases in a week? The table 1 shows the daily new cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines as of July 8, 2020. If you notice, there is a 7-day moving average of 82. Do you wonder how they solve it? It is by using the measures of central tendency. In this lesson, you will be able to differentiate mean, median, and mode. Describe a set of ungrouped data using mean, median, and mode. Let us have first a pretest. Number one, it is the value that occurs most frequently in a set of data. The answer is letter C. Number two, using the data 24, 25, 28, 30, 23, what is summation of x? 
The answer is letter D. Number 3. What is the mode of the given set of data 21, 23, 21, 25, 24? The answer is letter A. Number 4. What is the median in the given set of data 4, 6, 10, 12, 9? The answer is letter C. Number 5. What is the mean of the following data? 91, 61, 50, 37, 83. The answer is letter C. Let us have now a recap. In studying statistics, the collection of data or measurement is comprised. Hence, adding of several numbers is needed. The sigma symbol, read as the sum of, is used when adding several numbers. Summation or sigma notation is a convenient and simple form of shorthand used to give a concise expression for a sum of the values of a variable. For example, assuming that the table shows your final grades from the different learning areas, we can use variables to represent each learning area. We let x be the final grades of the different learning areas. This symbol is read as x sub i, where index i tells the position of each value. Considering the example, we can use this formula. To substitute the data, we have the summation of x sub i as i goes from 1 to 8 equals 85 plus 86 plus 84 plus 84 plus 88 plus 89 plus 84 plus 87. Therefore, the summation of x sub i as i goes from 1 to 8 equal to 687. If we will use all the given values of a variable in finding the sum, the limits of the summation are usually omitted. Look at the example below. Try this. Given the data as follows, 34, 32, 36, 30, 39, 37, 33, find the summation of x. Correct. The answer is 241. You are now ready to learn the measures of central tendency. An ungrouped data is a set of values that is not organized or classified as a group. A measure of central tendency is a value that represents the whole set of data. These are mean, median, and mode. Let us now discuss the mean of ungrouped data. The mean of ungrouped data is obtained by adding all the values divided by the frequency of a set of data. The mean of ungrouped data is also called average. It is written as follows. Where x bar is the mean, summation of x is the sum of all the values in a set and n is the frequency. Considering the Table 1, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases from March 21 to 27, 2020 are as follows. 77, 73, 82, 90, 84, 71, 96. To get the mean, we have the following. Hence, the seven-day morning average of COVID-19 confirmed cases on March 27 is obtained by getting the mean of the seven days prior to March 27, as shown on the next table. Let us now discuss the median of ungrouped data. The median of ungrouped data is the middle value of a set of data when all values are arranged in either ascending or descending order. If the frequency of the data is odd, then the middle value is the median of the set of data. 
If it is even, the median of the data is the mean of the two middle values. This formula can be used to identify the position of the median of a given set of ungrouped data. For example, arranging in ascending order of the same data from the COVID-19 cases from March 21 to 27, 2020, we have then to find the middle value we use the formula. The fourth score of the data is 82. Therefore, 82 is the median. Let us have example number 2. Find the median of the following set of data. By arranging the set of data, we have... Let us now use the formula to locate the position of the median, where n is equal to 8. Therefore, the median is the 4 and 5 tenths score. The 4 and 5 tenths score of the data is the mean of the 4th and 5th score. We have 33 plus 35 all over 2, and that is equal to 34. Therefore, 34 is the median. Since median is the midmost value, it can be easily determined even without using the formula. Example number 3. Find the median of the following set of data. Arranging the data in ascending order, we have... Since there are 5 data, Therefore, the middle value is the third score. Therefore, the median is 16. Example number 4. Find the median of the following set of data. By arranging the data in ascending order, we have... Since there is an even number of value, the median is determined by the average of the two middle values. And those are 16 and 19. So we have 16 plus 19 all over 2. And that is 17.5. Therefore, the median is 17.5. Lastly, let us discuss the mode of ungrouped data. The mode of the ungrouped data is the value that most frequently appears in a set of data. When the value in a set of data appears only once, then the data has no mode. The data can be also classified according to the number of modes it has. If the data has one mode, it is unimodal. If the data has two modes, it is bimodal. If the set of data has more than one mode, it is multimodal. Using the data above from Table 1, the set of data has no mode, since each value, which are 71, 73, 77, 82, 84, 90, 96, appears only once. For example, Find the mode of the given set of data. Correct! The mode is 5 because 5 appears most frequently. The data is said to be unimodal. Let us have one more example. The water consumption in cubic meter for the past 6 months is shown below. Find the mean, region, and mode. So for the mean, we have, therefore, the mean water consumption for the six months is 24.5. Let us have now the median. Arrange the data first. Let us solve for the middle value using the formula. 3.5 score relies between the 3rd and 4th score. Since the frequency of the data is even, then the median is the average of the two middle values. In this example, we get the mean 
of the third and fourth value. Therefore, the median water consumption for the six months is 24.5. Let us now identify the mode. Yes, there are two different water consumption that appears twice. Therefore, the modes are 24 and 25. The data is said to be bimodal. Let us have the activities. Let's practice. Write your answer on the blank provided after each number. Keep practicing. Complete the table below by finding the mean, median, and mode of each set of data. Test yourself. Fill in the box with a number word as your answer for the puzzle below. Let us have the wrap-up. How is the median of ungrouped data obtained? What should you consider when finding the median of ungrouped data? What are the classifications of data according to number of modes? Valuing. During this time of pandemic, have you ever considered prayer to be the mode of your daily activities? Did you put God to be the median of your life? Write a certain situation that answers the questions on the blanks provided below. Let us answer the post-test. Use the table at the right to answer the questions that follow. Choose the letter of the correct answer. The table shows the confirmed and recovered cases of COVID-19 in 15 barangays in Pasig City as of June 22, 2020. Key to corrections are given to you. Just check your answer and be honest. I hope you have learned a lot today. Have a great day.